Uvlami. Uvlami Ilukating Quianini Kaigavsi Ilihago Vingmun Van Gwenzi Shilakat Juk Vanjet No Jainjet Shoi Dile. Good morning and welcome to our schools. We would like to begin by acknowledging that we are taking part in this experience on the rich lands of the Gwich'in and the Inavaluate. Bonjour et bienvenue à History. Nous aimerions commencer par reconnaître que nous participons à cet événement sur les terres généreuses des Gwich'in et des Inuvialui. We would like to extend warm greetings to our elders, special guests, visitors from the Canadian Space Agency, the Beaufort Delta Education Council, Inuvik District Education Authority, Aurora Research Institute, media, family members, students, and staff, and those joining online. And a special welcome to Canadian astronauts, Jenny Sidey Gibbons. <laughs> and soon, David Saint-Jacques. It's not every day we get an opportunity to welcome Canadian astronauts to our school. So how cool is that? We would like to welcome Inuvik elder Lillian Elias, who will open this special event in prayer. Please stand. Uvlami, Van Gwinzi, good morning. I hope you're having lots of fun seeing the astronaut. So exciting. I'm going to say my prayer in Inuvialuktun. Inuvialuktun is my language ever since I was a little girl. And when I pray and when I talk in my language, it means more to me than I try to say it in. Uh, in English. So I'll be saying it in Inuvialuktun. Atene kinyakto lang nelly chunga ulapak. Ilibuti kamanaktoatin. Nalungi chuatin, ilihimaroatin, ilihimakaptin. Ukuatahin, kairo, takpavanga haru katane kilibit. Na iswakto akun mani kitkili kitin. Iswami, isumalao de krangin nik. Umating it did not I took him a little bit. Gamanakto a tin ilivit, ilivit, angala tili tipped. Uvaptikon angala tuli on a cup day livid angala naptin. Matkoa hura out tibut at an air livid. Nako holuit pilaratin. Uming a kinna on a cup tibut kinna lang nail each young. A pack put kilang mirtin at kinna go viole. Atanawin Kaili, Ihumatin Hanali, Mani, Nuna Mekilak Tuntau, Ublumi Lilu, Nakishrap Tinikai Chokti, Ublumi, when you could have Tinikis Magayung Narutin, Ubahutau, when you have Vivid Lagati, Atanawin Pihin, Hilivit Kihivit, Huangarutin, Ukata Hinkuchakilakumaitin, Ilit Kosarik Soami Katanek, Nutakat. As an extra special touch to today's event, we welcome drum dancing instructors, Scott Kasuk, Marlo Kasuk, and Elder Lillian Elias, who will lead Mr. Bo's grade one class in the airplane drum dance. Enjoy everyone.
Beautiful job, students. Well, students, today is day zero of our countdown. Welcome to Space Day at East 3. What a wonderful opportunity this is for all of us to meet and greet and get to learn about some of the exciting and important work of our guests of honor, astronaut David Saint-Jacques, who we will meet shortly via satellite, and astronaut Jenny Seide Gibbons, who is here with us today. I would like to share with you a little bit about astronaut Jenny Seide Gibbons. She's originally from Calgary, Alberta. She holds a PhD in engineering from Cambridge University in England. In 2016, the Institute of Engineering and Technology awarded Jenny with the Young Woman Engineer of the Year Award. That same year, the Royal Academy of Engineering awarded Jenny as the Young Engineer of the Year. Well, in 2017, Jenny was selected to join the Canadian Space Agency's Astronaut Corps. Jenny is a great role model for all youth, especially young women considering careers in science and technology related fields. So Jenny, the floor is yours. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for the welcome. I mean, I arrived here just a day ago, but I feel incredibly humbled and honored and excited to not only be in your school, but in your community. And this is incredible for me. It's my favorite part of my job to be able to come and visit people in Canada. And uh, it's made all the more special by seeing things like you here today, the welcome that I just received, the blessing, thank you. Um, and the satellite station that I visited yesterday, I want to give special mention of that because I hope you guys realize how cool that is. Not only do you have this incredible science and engineering institute facility here, but you've also integrated international collaboration and local collaboration with the art that's on the antenna dishes. I just thought that was fantastic. So I'm here today to share a little bit about space why space is important and a very, very small part of the space industry that I've taken part in. So I'm here to share that with you. And if I start by talking about space, I really have to start by talking about the moon. So who here knows that humans went to the moon? Good. And who here knows how we went to the moon? Well, good. We went to the moon. With a rocket. With a rocket, yes. Great job, no, I think. Great job. We went to the moon with not just any rocket, but a huge rocket. We built a rocket that is the size of a skyscraper. We put it together with the precision of a watch. We accelerated it, sped it up to the speed of a bullet, and we sent it a quarter of a million miles away. And we did it again and again, and we brought everyone who we sent back safely. It's incredible if you think about that. We invented new math to do that. And that's something that humans have wanted to do for so long. How many people do you think looked at the moon before us and thought, how long does it take to get there? And we answered that question. And that's what I want to talk about when I talk about space. I want to talk about the fact that it changes what we think is possible. Space is so inspiring and exciting. Now, my journey in space is Brand new, I haven't yet been to space, but my journey also started with a rocket. Not this rocket. This is the rocket that sent David St. Jacques to the International Space Station in December. We're gonna hear from him later, which is pretty exciting. Not this rocket, this is a SpaceX rocket, which is going to send people to space in the future. But this rocket. I made this rocket when I was probably around the age of some of you who are here today. And I made it because I was excited about space and I was excited about science. And it was around the same time that I made this. You can tell because it's the same like artistic era. I really liked coloring like that when I was your guys' age. And I was curious. I just wanted to learn new things and learn about science. Now for me, that translated into something called engineering. I became an engineer 
This is a picture of me when I was in an engineering course when I went to university. And I chose to become an engineer because I wanted to improve people's lives. And I think that's what engineering is, really. Like, we take science class in school, and science is incredibly interesting. But engineering is using the science that we learn to solve problems and make people's lives better. And that's what I chose to do. I had that curiosity. I wanted to make people's lives better, so I became an engineer. And in this picture, I look like I'm floating, kind of like you would be in space, because I went on this plane called a parabolic aircraft, and we did a, a, like, a loop like this. And when you're at the peak of what we call the parabola, you float for about 45 seconds, maybe. And you can do experiments up there, just kind of like you can do in space. Um, and I love this. This is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I said, I want to use science to make people's lives better. I want to be an engineer. So I became an engineer, and I was actually teaching at a university. I thought I would do this forever, until the Canadian Space Agency announced that they were recruiting astronauts. And when they did that, I thought of the moon landing, I thought of some other Canadian astronauts I looked up to, and I thought about that little rocket that I made when I was your guys' age. And I thought, wow, that is so cool, I have to apply. Now when I applied, I didn't really think that I would get it. I thought, I'll just try. I think it'll be really cool, it'll be, it'll be fun. I'll get to spend some time learning how to train like an astronaut. And it turns out it was really hard. It was one of the hardest things that I've ever done. I had to, to be tested in all sorts of ways to become an astronaut. You have to learn how to put out fires. You have to, to jump into freezing cold pools with waves to do emergency simulations. They test your physical fitness. Uh, they test how much you know. They put you through, they really test everything. They put you through the ringer. And I thought that I wouldn't make it, but I would have saved myself a lot of trouble if I had just backed myself, believed in myself, and had a little bit more confidence. So that's one lesson that I want to leave you guys. Even if you don't know what you want to do yet, whether you want to be an astronaut, or an artist, or an engineer, or a scientist, or a writer, or a politician, anything, you have to back yourself. So I hope that you're going to believe in yourself, keep going even when things don't work, and just push forward to be whatever you want to be, even if it's not an astronaut. I think that's really important advice for everybody. So after that recruitment process, which we can talk a little bit more about later if you're interested, I became one of Canada's newest astronauts, along with my friend Josh, here on the right, and two people who've been astronauts for a while. One is David, who we'll hear about in a little while, and one is Jeremy Hansen. He also trains down in Houston, Texas. That's where the Space Center is. And now I spend a lot of my time learning how to work in space. I spend my time learning about all the systems on the International Space Station, which I know you guys have been learning about in school. It's about 400 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, and it's where we do all of the science and engineering that we do in space currently. I learn how to do a spacewalk. There's a picture of me in a spacesuit. And I'm doing my best to learn all of the procedures and tools that I would need to do maintenance outside in space. And I also fly really, really fast planes. I fly jets. And the reason why I do that is to learn how to work with a crew in a high-stress situation. It's a good simulator. Again, all of this is to be able to eventually fly in space, maybe on something called the International Space Station. So when we talk about going to the moon, we talk about how we went and then we came back. But the International Space Station is kind of special because it's lasted for 20 years in orbit. It's pretty sustainable. And the reason why is because it is made up of all of these international collaborators all around the world who have put forward technologies and modules to make this. So it just speaks to the power of when you work together. David St. Jacques is on the International Space Station now. He's doing maintenance on all those systems that I mentioned I'm learning about, whether it's how to produce air to breathe up there or how to recycle water. He's learning how to move the robotic systems up there, the Canadarm2, and he's learning how to do a spacewalk. He actually did one a little while ago. You should look it up if you're interested. It is really cool. And all of this is to help us here on Earth. So I've talked to David a little bit, and he said one of his favorite things to do on the International Space Station is to look back at our Earth and think about all the people that are down there. And this is one of the most important things about space, 
If we're worried about things like climate change or how life is changing down here and we want to make it better for people and more sustainable, looking back at Earth from space is one of the best places to do that because we can really take the heartbeat of our planet from up there. We can figure out how our Earth is changing, we can monitor things, and we can help people who might be facing storms or floods or whatever might be changing down here on Earth. I think this is one of the most important reasons that we go, besides the science and technology, besides helping people directly through those technologies, and besides really changing what we think is possible. So if you're interested in space, I want to say that we have an opportunity for you guys coming up called Junior Astronauts. And this is an opportunity with the Canadian Space Agency to get online. There are tons of cool games uh, and interesting projects that you can do online with your teachers or your parents. And it is a chance to look at what the Canadian Space Agency is doing to make people's lives better here on Earth and to do in the future as we look at going back to the moon. So soon we're going to be able to actually talk to David St. Jacques. He's spending time on the International Space Station right now. He's doing experiments and maintaining all of the systems that keep us alive up there. One of my favorite things that he's doing actually is he's working with the water, water cleaning system up there, the water recycling system up there. And the reason why that's one of my favorites is because not only does it provide clean water for him to drink up on the space station, but it's also used here on Earth in remote regions to produce clean drinking water for people here as well. One interesting thing that David did this morning, actually, is he used this big arm that's on the outside of the space station called Canada Arm 2, and he caught what we call a visiting vehicle, part of a rocket that we sent up to space. He caught it with Canada Arm 2, and he docked it with the space station. It's pretty cool. You don't get to do that very often when you're in space. So that's one of the things that we can talk to him about this morning. And we'll be able to get all of our questions answered. We're just waiting for David to sign on now. He should be here shortly. Oh, look at that. When we're talking to Jenny, I can hear you. I'm glad that you can hear us. Now, how do you have me? I'm speaking to you here from East 3 School in Inuvik, Northwest Territories. Hey, Juan Great to see you, everybody. Welcome to Space Station. Uh, David, we're so excited to speak with you this morning. Thank you for making the time with us. Now, tell me a little bit about this morning. How was, uh, how was your cosmic catch with the Canadarm2? Was it just like you practiced? Practiced a lot for that, as you know well yourself, uh, fully trained. Uh, yeah, it's a big moment every time uh, for me as a Canadian and for every Canadian, every time we use Canada Arm 2 for an important operation, it's a big moment of pride. So to be at the controls myself after all these years of uh, training was a very, very special moment. And uh, fortunately, it all went well. Dick. Oh, that's so good to hear. Well, like I said, we're pretty excited to be down here with you. And uh, we have a few questions lined up for you. I'm going to pass the mic to our first, uh, our first student with a question. How do you feel physically and emotionally while in space? So being in space, first for your body is very difficult to adapt. You have to adapt because in the beginning, you have lose all sense of orientation and also you get very congested because all your blood rushes to your head and you get easily lost and confused so it takes a while physically and mentally to adapt at a level of emotions though it's a beautiful human adventure because you're here it's like going on an expedition or an excursion uh, or a trip 
because I'm here with the dear friends that I've been training with for many, many years. So uh, every day I wake up looking forward to a, a great day of uh, discovery with my crew members. And I can share the story with people on the ground like I'm doing now. So emotionally, it's very positive. The only thing that's uh, sad sometimes is I miss my family a lot, of course. Uh, to, to hear what you have to share about your mission. Next question. Comment vous dans l'espace? Dans l'espace, qu'est-ce qu'on mange? En fait, on mange de la nourriture déshydratée. J'en ai amené quelqu'un un peu pour vous montrer. Je vais me rapprocher de la caméra. C'est soit la nourriture déshydratée ou la nourriture qui se conserve longtemps, comme par exemple du saumon fumé, comme ça. Ou de la nourriture en boîte de conserve. C'est très spécial pour moi, c'est qu'on a fait venir de la nourriture faite, pré pré préparée par ma famille. Ça ressemble à la nourriture d'astronautes déshydratée. On a rajouté de l'eau chaude et voilà, ça devient dans ce cas-ci du chili normal. Puis je peux avoir des petites surprises, des friandises. Vous connaissez? C'est des biscuits canadiens qu'on m'envoie en cadeau surprise. Et puis, il faut boire aussi. On ne peut pas boire de l'eau dans un verre, mais on peut boire de l'eau avec une paille, comme ça, dans un sac en plastique. C'est comme ça qu'on se nourrit dans l'espace. Can you see the seasons from space? Yes, it's easy to see if it's winter or summer, but you know, half the Earth is in summer and half the Earth is in winter. So right now it's winter in the north. Well, it's springtime, I suppose, in the north. We can see the, the snow is melting in north of Canada. We can see there's no more snow in most of the United States. And we can see it's getting colder on the southern hemisphere, like in South America it's getting colder because over there it's the fall. So we can tell it's the season by, uh, by whether there's snow or not on the ground or if the trees are green or not. That we can also see from space. What are your current missions and tasks, and why are they so important? This is a mission of scientific exploration. So I do a lot of uh, research on the field of medicine, and I do a lot of uh, also maintenance of the space station to take care of all the life support system that is here. And everything we learn here is going to serve two purposes. First, it's going to help us be better living in space, so one day we can explore further and maybe go to Mars. But also, everything we learn here, we can use back on Earth, because the problems that astronauts have in space are the same as the problems people have on Earth, except they happen more quickly. It's a bit like we are aging faster. That way we can all find all sorts of solutions for health problems of our elders. What is your favorite zero gravity move, like a front flip? Oh, let me see if I can do a front flip. I'm pretty sure I can. I can show you a couple of moves. thing is to just hang from the ceiling, like this. OK, 
can hang from the wall. Is it always night in space? Oh. Is it always hot in space? Oh, night in space. Is it always night in space? No, it's, uh, you know, we go around the world very fast in space station. We go around the Earth in our one hour and a half. So every one hour and a half, sunrise, and then sunset 16 times a day. I have windows behind me. I'll show you. It's daytime now. During the day, it's very, very bright outside. We have to wear sunglasses if we want to look outside the, uh, out the window. The sky itself is always black. Even during the day, the sky is not blue. Even during the day, the sky is black. What's the best no gadget you have on the space station? Gadget we have on space station? Hmm. I think it's Canadarm. Canada Arm is this, uh, this incredible robot that helps us repair stations. First, it, were, it was used to build the space station, and then we use it to repair the space station. And now we use it also uh, to capture the cargo vehicles that bring us new food and new experiments. So I think that's a very smart piece of, uh, of technology, and it's a Canadian invention. Weather balloons get very large as they reach the upper atmosphere. Have you ever seen one from the ISS? That's an interesting question. I tried to see if I could spot them, but I was never able to see them. But I think you're right. I think if uh, one was coming kind of near in the same direction of the space station, we could see it because they get several hundreds of meters in size. So I should get more information about when and where they're launched from. And I'm pretty sure I can manage to take a photo of one. That would be neat. But so far, I've not seen one. Do people get sick more often or less often? And how do you treat them? So fortunately, we don't have a lot of medical problems on board. A lot of it is because, first, astronauts are usually very healthy people, and then we're very, very careful. We make sure we don't send anything that has any infection or microbes up here so we don't catch any disease. Before leaving, we are in quarantine, uh, so we don't go on in space even with a cold. Uh, and we're very careful not to hurt our, ourselves. But if there's a little problem, we have some medication. Uh, we have, uh, so we can help, we can help uh, ourselves. So the other day, a friend of mine cut herself in the face. I was able to uh, repair that wound. Uh, we have some medication, some antibiotics if you get an infection. So we have like a little clinic on board the space station uh, for, uh, for problems. And, uh, hope, and we just try to be very careful so we don't have a big problem. Can you see the black hole from the picture in space? That famous picture of the black hole, yes, I saw the picture too uh, and on the internet, but I cannot see it from here. No, it needs a very special telescope uh, to see that black hole. So from space station, we cannot see it better than you can from Earth. Jessica Tupavarla Kushto Zone Dalai Spas. La couche d'ozone, je peux voir où elle est. Je ne peux pas la voir parce qu'elle est transparente, elle est invisible. Euh, mais je sais où est-ce qu'elle est dans l'atmosphère. On voit très bien l'atmosphère de côté et toutes les couches, l'atmosphère jusqu'à jusqu l'espace. Et euh, 
Donc ça, c'est très beau parce que durant la journée, c'est bleu et ça brille. C'est que la Terre est brillante, l'atmosphère, c'est brillant et c'est bleu. Et durant la nuit, il y a une, comme une toute petite ligne orange au sommet. Donc c'est très, très beau. What personal items did you bring with you and why? I brought some things that reminded me of my family and people I love. So little toys that my children chose and gave to me <coughs> and uh, pictures uh, of my family and uh, a Rubik's Cube uh, that I have that my father gave me. Um, I have a couple of personal objects like this even. I have a uh, Inuit uh, sealskin wristband that I keep with me in, the, in my bedroom to remind me of my time up in the Arctic. Other astronauts do in your free time? Oh, one more time, maybe. What do you and your other astronauts do in your free time? Thank you. A free time. The thing I like to do most is uh, go to the window and look at the Earth. Because from here, the Earth is so beautiful. During the day, you can see all the mountains, the cities. During the night, you can see the light of the cities. And one thing that's amazing at night, something you know well uh, living in the north, is the, the northern lights. From space, the northern lights are like below us. They're like a, they look a bit like a, <coughs> like some green smoke dancing, green waves dancing on top of the earth. It's really so beautiful. Can you see the ice caps melting or any other evidence of climate change from the ISS? Uh, one thing we can do is I can look at glaciers uh, places where there's snow and compare with old photographies, old photographs that I can find online. And there you can see that, yes, some of the glaciers are smaller now than they used to be. Uh, other things we can see, of course, is sometimes we can see bad pollution uh, over cities, over the largest cities, and things like that. Où dormez-vous? En fait, la chambre, c'est un, euh, un peu comme une petite armoire. Et, euh, elle n'est pas très grande, mais c'est dessus chez, chez moi. Je peux fermer la porte et c'est calme. Et dans ma chambre, j'ai un sac de couchage. Je vais l'emmener, je vais vous montrer comment on dort. On a un sac de couchage avec des bras, comme ça. On peut accrocher le sac sur le mur. On est très, très confortable. What's your favorite food up there? We can see uh, shooting stars. Uh, they're below us, of course, because shooting stars are when meteorites hit the atmosphere. For us, it's a little bit scary because if a shooting star hits the station, it's like a rock hitting the station, and maybe it can make a hole in it. So we're not big fans of shooting stars here on space station. Whenever we see one, we feel like, "Ooh, we got lucky; it didn't hit us."
Can you see shooting stars in space? Yes, we can see shooting stars. They're below us. Shooting stars are meteorites. They're rocks that fall into the atmosphere, and they burn when they hit the atmosphere. So we can see them below us like little white lines. But uh, whenever we see a shooting star, we know we've been lucky, because if it hits us, it can make a hole in our spacecraft, and that would be very dangerous. Do you dream differently in space? You know, I, I have more dreams about my family here than I had on the ground. Dreams are not very different, I think. One thing is different is sometimes I can see bright streaks of light in two, I, when my eyes are shut. That's cosmic rays hitting the back of my eye. Can you bring a dog in space? Dog in space? You know, dogs went to space before humans. Dogs were the first living things to go to space. There were uh, a couple of uh, Russian dogs, <coughs> Laika and her friends, that went to space first. And then they sent monkeys, and then they sent people. Have you discovered anything new in space? Have you discovered anything new in space? Going on in the space station. Yes, so there's several hundred experiments going on in the space station all the time, and several thousand since the beginning of station. And each of these is a little discovery. That's how research functions, one little step at a time. Right now, we're doing a lot of experiments on the, the human body, on the bone strength, and on muscle strength, and on the, your balance system, and on the immune system, and uh, also on uh, Parkinson's disease. And uh, so every one of these research will make a little step, a little discovery, and in the end, we get big advances that way. Is the Northern Lights different in space? Excuse me, can you repeat? Are the Northern Lights different in space? Northern Lights. So the Northern Lights they're different because they're the same color, the same beautiful green color and sometimes pink, but they're below us. They're not above us. They float. They dance on top of the atmosphere of the Earth. So it's really beautiful. When we come into uh, the night, you look, you see the sun goes down, the air is blue, and then it becomes black, and then you start to see these dancing green lights on top of the atmosphere. And it's like uh, enchanting. To me, it's mesmerizing. I really, I really love it. It's just as beautiful as on the Earth, except it's just a different direction. But we can see the whole northern light all going all the way around the pole. Well, David, thank you so much for sharing your amazing mission with us and everything that you can see up there. We appreciate learning about it. And uh, like you heard, we had some great questions for you. So thanks for taking that time out of your day. And unfortunately for us, David's got to go back to work. But we are very happy to hear from you. Thank you, David. Thank you very much, Jenny. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the spring season. and. Uh, be careful. Take care of our beautiful, great north. I have such great memories of living there myself. Station, this is Houston. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> No matter um, 
No matter how many times I talk with David on orbit, I'm always really pleased to speak with him because not only is it this person who's viewing our Earth from this different perspective and can answer all of these fun questions about how the Earth behaves and how different things are up there, um, but it's also just a friend in orbit who loves what he does and is excited to share it with people. So we have a couple more questions which David was able to answer for us on a video. Uh, we're going to play that now and see what else David has to share. Hello, East 3 School. Hola, Kut. We have a few questions for you, David, from East 3 Schools. Uh, the first one is, do the northern lights look different from space? And that's from Evander. Yes, the northern lights, well, they're the same color and they move in the same way, but you have to look down to see them because space station is above the northern lights. From here, they look a little bit like greenish clouds that move around the poles of the Earth. It's really, really quite beautiful. Prochaine question. Est-ce que tu peux voir les troupeaux de caribous quand tu es dans l'espace? Ça vient de Noah Ryan. Hey, Noah Ryan. J'ai... J'ai essayé de voir des troupeaux de caribous, mais je n'ai pas réussi encore. Euh, ça prendrait des très, très bonnes jumelles parce que ce n'est pas très gros, un caribou. Euh, mais peut-être s'ils sont vraiment ensemble en grand groupe, très dense, ça serait possible. Moi, je pense que c'est possible. Je n'ai juste pas été capable encore. Next question is from the Innovic Robotics and Engineering Club. How will our CubeSat get launched? So... You know, we're lucky because we're standing just next to the place the CubeSats are launched from. This is an airlock that leads to a sliding table on which there will be a special machine that's like a, it's like a CubeSat a cannon, I want to say. We load several CubeSats there and it just pushes them at the right velocity to be put on the right orbit around the Earth. So they're going to be launched straight from here. Fantastic. All right, next question is from Fabia. Can children grow in space without gravity? That's an interesting hypothetical question. Of course, uh, no child has ever been to space, but we've been growing uh, a few uh, animals for research. We've been growing plants, and these uh, plants and animals seem to grow well uh, up here. So if I had to guess, I would say yes. What's certain is, though, you know, me, I was already a pretty old guy when I came here in my uh, 40s, and it took me several months to learn to fly correctly. I bet you a kid would learn to fly just like that, and they would become super good flyers. All right, next question is from Tegan. And uh, Tegan asks, à quoi ressemblent les territoires du nord-ouest de l'espace? Mais ça dépend de la saison. Moi, en ce moment, je suis ici, c'est l'hiver, alors ben, on voit surtout euh, de la neige euh, pour le territoire du nord-ouest. On peut deviner euh, la forme des côtes, les îles. En ce moment, c'est le printemps, alors on peut deviner un peu euh, quand il y a de la fonte autour. Ça peut nous permettre de voir avec la fonte de l'eau les, euh, les lignes de démarcation de la côte. Euh, euh, c'est très beau et j'ai hâte, de, hâte de, que le temps avance pour voir euh, peut-être les couleurs plus euh, du printemps. Kaylin asks, what is the most important thing that has happened to you during all your time on the International Space Station? Well, I think for me, the most memorable time was when I had the chance to go outside the space station on a spacewalk, put my spacesuit and go outside to do some repairs uh, for the whole day. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I had been inside for many, many months, and I, could, I was looking at the Earth through the window. But, you know, it's different when you go outside and see it just through the helmet of your, uh, of your space suit. So I think that was uh, the moment, the most uh, memorable moment, is when I finally got out of the hatch of uh, the space station to go outside. Mm -hmm. All right. And Luca and Kaylee ask, what do you need to do for school to become an astronaut and what advice would you give to future astronauts? So being an astronaut was always a dream for me, um, but a dream means just a direction. It's not necessarily a destination. That means that your dream is positive when it helps you every day to better yourself. It gives you a direction to move towards but it shouldn't make you sad if you don't go there. I'm saying that because becoming an astronaut 
is not only quite difficult, but it requires some luck, I have to say. So my advice would be do something you absolutely love. Pick a field you absolutely love, because that's the only way that you will find enough energy within your heart to become the best at it. That's very, very important to be an astronaut, to be excellent at whatever job you decide to do. And then if you're doing something you love, well, even if you don't become an astronaut, well, it's not too bad. You're doing something you love, right? Other things that are important, you need to stay in good shape. You have to respect your body. You have to be careful what you eat. Uh, you need to be respectful of your health to become an astronaut. And finally, maybe most important, in terms of character and attitude, you have to become someone who is trustworthy. You have to become a responsible adult that people can give missions to. And that, it's never too early to start as a young person to develop the habit of making decisions, sticking with them, and make sure that people can trust you. One more question from the school, a little lighter. Can you arm wrestle in space? That's a good question. I, got, I have to try with one of my crew members. You know, how would you, to arm wrestle, you need, how do you do that? I think if I torque my arm like this, what's gonna happen is all my body's gonna turn, right? So we need a table. We need to anchor our feet to be able to arm wrestle. Oh, here I'm flying away. So I think if we hook our feet, both our feet down, maybe it's possible. I'll try. That was, that was amazing. What an experience. Um, there, there are so many people to thank for bringing this conversation to Anuvik. Thank you to the elders and invited guests for being a part of the experience. We're so happy to have you here with us. Thank you to the Aurora Research Institute, especially Nanar Hakobian, for your work in our schools, being awarded this opportunity. Thank you to the students of these three secondary and elementary schools and to those who asked such great questions today. We'd also like to thank the Canadian Space Agency and astronaut Jenny Seide Gibbons for offering such an event and for coming up here to be with us. And finally, of course, we want to thank David Saint-Jacques over 400 kilometers above us on the International Space Station for joining us and for talking with us from space. Now, he's pretty far away and he's getting farther as, he, as we go here, so we're gonna have to say thank you to him very, very loudly. So on the count of three, I want the loudest thank you to David you can give us. You ready? One, two, three. I'm pretty sure he heard that. Great job. Now, we do have a few minutes left before we have to say goodbye. And so we're now going to open up for any questions. We